Welcome, brothers and sisters, to today's morning devotion. Late last year, our provost gathered all the ministry staff, brought them together and shared with us the theme for the year of 2020 that will be guiding the church. And um, it was a very exciting moment for us. What caught my attention was what the provost mentioned, that this year, the year 2020, he expected all Christians to get out of their pews, go out into the world and shine their light so that we can make the darkness disappear from our society, in our communities, by the little contribution that we make. Little did we know that the coronavirus was coming to chase us away from our churches and contain us in our homes. This is Reverend Dennis bringing you today's devotion. Let us pray. Almighty and ever-loving Father, we thank you, we adore you, and we exalt you for giving us another gift, another day, so that we may glorify you and live for you. Father God, we pray as we settle down to listen to your word, we pray for your Holy Spirit to impart upon each and every one of us and speak to, to us in a language that we understand. Father, we welcome you. Be with us in our homes. In the name of God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Today's word of God is coming from the book of John, chapter 1, from verses 4 to 5 which reads, In him was life, and that life was the light of all mankind. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has overcome it. John writes to us today to remind us of this important truth about us as children of the light, that wherever there is life, there is also light. To remind us that whoever has life also has the light within them. As you all know, John lived to be a very old man, and God enabled him to pass through very trying times, like being boiled in hot oil, but remaining alive. Spending his old age as a prisoner in Patmos, but even that could not make him forsake his God, or even keep quiet about his glorious grace. He witnessed unto death, as he writes in Revelation chapter 12, verses 11, that they have conquered him by the blood of the Lamb, and by the word of their testimony, and they did not love their lives, so as to shy away from death. Brothers and sisters, everyone's world has been changed radically, and from the look of things, it will change even more in the times to come. But take heart, for Paul reminds us in 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verses 13, that no temptation has overtaken you except what is common to mankind, and God is faithful. He will not let you be tempted beyond what you can bear. But when you are tempted, he will also provide a way so that you can endure it. Christians have passed through many rough times in history. Times when the future seemed blur and bleak to them, but God delivered them through it all. History records and the acts of the apostles confirms that it was their gathering together, even in small groups, that was common in all situations. Throughout the waves of persecution, we are shown that the Christians will find opportunities to meet in closed doors for prayer and to read the Word of God. Remember that they did not have the Word of God in plenty and available as we have it today. The church might be closed. But I love what is trending in the, in the internet and in the social medias. That the buildings themselves are the ones that are locked, but the churches are still open. And it is an encouragement from John reminding us that we should not lose focus on what we can do by just looking at what we can't do. The devil is trying to make us understand that we are in trying times, that death is knocking on our doors, that it is at the corner coming. But I want to encourage you this morning that during these times are the times that people will fail to, to pray. These are the times that people will feel a little bit of hardness in coming together to pray as a family. How I encourage you as a family, as an individual, as a couple, continue coming together in prayer for the Lord hears and listens to our prayers. John writes to remind us 
that when we received Christ, we received a torch, or rather a baton, to carry to the next generation. That light is the good news. The shocking bit about all this is that the best environment that favored the spread of the gospel were actually the tough times. Tertullian, a church father, said and wrote that the blood of the martyrs was the seed of the church. What we face today does not come close to what was recorded by John and other disciples during the trying times. And yet he still remembered his call to be the light and the salt of the world. A world that seemed rotten, a world that seemed there was no hope and they did not see much of the future. He still had words to encourage those who were weak, those who had been orphaned, and even the widowed. When we receive life through Christ, we also receive his light. His light is the voice of reason that puts us back on track when you go astray and a beacon of hope in a world that is slowly falling into despair. The same John writes in chapter 12 of verse 46 and says that Christ came into the world as a light so that no one who believes in me should stay in darkness. Brothers and sisters, why don't you take up the challenge today to light up your candle and place it on the windowsill as a sign of hope for all to see and glorify God. We hear of stories in Spain where people who cannot meet in numbers, they're opening their windows and singing songs to each other just to comfort one another. These are those times when we should be there for one another to remind each other that God has placed a special pinch of himself in each and every one of us. Today, as you wake up to a different reality, and close your eyes to share with God your concerns for the world. Remember, he is counting on your availability on the ground to shine his light of grace upon the world. Take the chance to share words of encouragement to your fellow men. Do not be part of the team that is busy looking and searching for new conspiracies that only promote hate and scorn among men. But remember that you are the light. Do not spread fear, for it only breeds panic and we've seen how counterproductive it is in our local supermarkets when panic gets the best of us and we start buying things that we don't even require. Instead, let us remind people that it is always darkest before dawn. As Psalms chapter 30 verse 5 alludes, that weeping may stay in the night, but joy comes in the morning. You are that light that we are awaiting to see on this, on this particular day every morning. There are many people out there who were never to get saved or get discipled or even get encouraged within the church walls. Here is your chance to go out and to witness to them at home through your deeds and when necessary through words. Remember, we always start in Jerusalem. Start at home. For this is the best place to start, and charity starts at home. Let me also encourage you some more by reminding you that the disciples of Christ, the 12 of them, had only three years with Jesus, walking together. And by the time Jesus was ascending to go back to heaven, they were considered to be ready to be considered to be called disciples. And subsequently, they were also commissioned to go out and win souls. I will ask you this question. How long have you known Christ? How long have you listened and sat here in church to listen to the word of God? How long have you gone to classes that have equipped you and trained you to be a disciple? If you're in Sunday school, probably five years and above. If you are among the teens, probably for 15 years you've been seated in church. If you are a youth, probably for 20 years you've been seated in church. If you're a young adult, probably for 30 to 35 years, you've been sitting in church, faithfully listening to the word of God. And if you're an adult, probably you've been sitting between 40, 50, 60, and maybe even 70 to 80 years in church, and you've never gotten a chance to witness 
to the people out there. This is our chance. Do not focus on what you cannot do, but focus on what you are able to do. The church has found a platform that we can share with you. Even if we can't meet face to face, at least you can get to hear the word of God and be nourished. How I challenge you, instead of just sitting there and wasting time on your Facebook as you are looking and scrolling through what people are saying on social media, why don't you take a chance and just encourage people? Everybody is repeating this statement that we are all living in the dark times. Why don't you be the light in this dark time? Why don't you light your shine, let your light shine faithfully and consistently within the boundaries that God has given you? And let's see what God will accomplish among us today. May the Lord bless you. Even as I welcome Reverend Ignatius to come and pray with us, I'd like to welcome any person out there who does not have a personal relationship with the Lord and you'd like to have this special relationship with him. Well, today we'll give you a chance and I believe the Reverend Ignatius will pray with you. So come closer to your cameras, close your eyes and believe with us that the Lord is going to do something new in your heart today. In the name of God the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Friends, you have heard the message of God today. You have been touched and you like to give your life to Christ. It is the best thing that can happen to you in such a time as this. There is heaven and there is judgment and there is hell. If you are make, making that decision, kindly repeat this prayer after me. Say, Lord Jesus, thank you for your word. Thank you for challenging me today and speaking deep into my heart. You know my sins. They are bare before you. Remove them from my heart, Lord. Remove my name from the book of judgment and write it in the book of life. Today, I start a new walk with you. I'm born again. Thank you for you came to save me. And today, I start this journey of salvation with you. In Jesus' name, amen. For those of us who have other needs, we shall pray with you today that the light of Christ will shine in your life. Let us pray. We thank you, Jesus, because of your salvation. You came that we may have the light and that your light will shine in our lives. Thank you, Lord, that we could be going through difficult moments in our lives. We pray that you shine your light. For those who are sick, dear God, we pray that you shall shine your light in their sick areas, Lord. For those, Lord, who are desiring peace, we pray that your light shall shine in their areas that they need peace. For those who are struggling with various addiction, Lord, we pray that your light will shine in their areas of addictions, Lord. We pray that, Lord, who are, those who are carrying loads of pain, that, Lord, you shall release them, for in your cross we have power. Shine in their lives, Jesus Christ. Even in this time of uncertainty, Lord, we thank you because we know you are going to shine over what is happening and your glory will be filled all over the world. We thank you, Lord, for your salvation. We thank you for you are the true light. Shine, Jesus Christ, shine. Let your shine, let your light shine in our lives, today and in the days to come. In the name of Jesus Christ we pray. Amen. If you have given your life to Christ, if you have other prayer needs, kindly Send us an email as provided on your screens. And now may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord cause his face to shine towards you and give you peace. May the Lord shine in all areas of your life that require his light. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, 
be among you and remain with you always. Amen. God bless you.